part two of our for loop series. And in this video, we're going to be looking at some examples of for loops and how we can use them in some programs. So let's get into it. First of all, let's do a currency converter. I'm currently in South Africa and I'd love to go overseas on a little tour. And if I want to go overseas, I would obviously need to convert my money into another currency, let's say US dollars. Um, so at the moment, the South African Rand, obviously this will be different by the time you watch this video, uh, but at the moment, the South African Rand, one US dollar is the equivalent of 18 South African Rand and 92 cents. So basically what I want to do is I want to have a nice little table displayed. Um, so let's focus particularly on just that information for now. Um, let's display a table where we have something that looks like this, where we have $1 is 1892 Rand, and then $2 is 37 Rand, 84, and so on. So let's go from 1 to 10, for example. So let's try this example in Delphi. Here we go, a nice little display. We're going to display in this memo over here, memo display, and uh, let's go to our currency converter. And so we got the rate over there. I've got a nice little heading there, dollars and Rand, separated by a hash 9, which is a tab. So let's go. We're going to use a for loop. Now, my looping variable is going one, two, three, four. I could use R, but I've actually declared it as dollars just so it makes more sense to me. So I'm going to say four, and all this pops up for us. So instead of R, I'm going to say R dollars. And we want to start it from one up until 10. Let's display till 10. And as I said, we must always put in a begin and end. Oh, that's not even the word begin. Begin and end. I like to put these little comments at the end, end of for loop to so I know what we're doing. And what I want to display, I want to go, okay, so in the memo display dot lines dot add, we are displaying something that's going one, two, three, four. That first column, if you remember, one, two, three, four. That's that's our for loop variable. That's i dollars. Right? But that's an integer, so we need to convert that from an integer to a string. So let's just get the first part done. So if I just do that, let's see what that looks like. Come on, kapal, kapal, kapal. So it's busy generating the code. Taking forever. There we go. Finally, boom. And let's run it. So we've got dollars, got rands, and we've got this one, two, three. Great. Then after that one, I'm going to put like some sort of hash now so we can have a tab as well. So I like to just construct a column for column. So we've got the first column going. Now we're going to put a hash nine in so we can have a nice little tab. Now I need to add um, the actual value in rands. Now I've got a rands variable of type real because obviously we're dealing with uh, decimal value. So I'm going to say r rands equals to 18.92 multiplied by what? Well, when we display that table, the first value was a one that we want to say one times that. Then we want to say two times that. Where do I get that one? To? That's my looping variable. So I'm going to display r dollars times about 18.92. So the way I said, just get it working for one line that you want to display and then believe that the loop will do it for all the other lines as long as you got your interactivity with the for loop variable. So we are taking 18.92 times and by that dollars, which is going to be a one the first time and display it. And then it's going to become a two and display it. So what we want to do, we want to display it here. We want to display our rands over here, but it's, we want to display it obviously from a float to a string. But actually, we want to display it to two decimal places in currency. So I'm going to say float to string F. And then we're going to put the FF currency comma eight comma two so we can display it so it looks like actual money let's run it and see what that looks like so display and there we go it's nicely laid out we've got nice currency format so there we can see how the values are changed so if i've got ten dollars i'm gonna need a lot of money okay so please donate now i'm just kidding okay so just recap from one to ten that's my folder variable i used our dollars as my looping variable so that i can it makes sense that i'm taking the rands taking the amount times about the dollars, which is our looping variable. Display the looping variable, so it's going one, two, three, then a hash nine for a tab, and then display our calculated rands. And it will repeatedly do that 10 times. Let's look at another example. Let's look at temperature. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. So in temperature, we have Celsius and Fahrenheit. And the one degree Celsius is equal to 
33.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And so there at the bottom there, you can see the bottom of this Google, I've got this on Google, um, right there, that's the formula. So if we want to work out Fahrenheit, we take the number of degrees Celsius, we times it by 9 divided by 5, and then that answer will be plus 32, and that will give us our value in Fahrenheit. Yeah, in South Africa we use Celsius, and in America they use Fahrenheit. So let's, we want a table that looks something like this. We want to say 1 degree Celsius, and then the equivalent Fahrenheit value. Something like that. That's what we want to generate. So let's go into the Delphi code. So here we have a button which we're going to run the code on. And I've got two little um, little spin edits here. One that says SBN start and one that says SBN end. I want to actually, when I do my table, I want to start from that number up until that value. So from 18 to 30. So in that case, let's have a look. We're going to click on the button. I've already displayed my nice little headings with a little hash nine in between. There's my formula and I've already gotten the inputs for those uh, two spin edits. So let's have a look. I want to display the Celsius. The Celsius will be going one, two, three, four, whatever the start. Let's pretend start is one and let's pretend that's 10 just to make life easier for now. So I basically want to display one, two, three, four. So my Celsius is basically my looping variable in this case. So I'm going to have a for loop variable. I could use R. But I'm going to use our cell for Celsius. I've declared it at the top there. I've typed ordinal type, integer. And we are going to start from whatever that value is. So not from one, from whatever they, the user has put in the start spin edit. And we're going to go until wherever the user wants us to end from the end spin edit. And we want to do this multiple times. So begin end. Let's make sure we know that this is the end of my for loop. Just so that I know. Okay. So I'm displaying a one, two, three, four. So in the mem display, I need to display a variable that's going one, two, three, four. If those are the values that the user wants, one, two, three, four. What, what, what's going one, two? Three? That's my for loop variable. In this case, it's our cell. So let's put in our cell and our, our cell. But remember, that's an integer. So we want to convert that from an int to a string so that it can be used in the memo control memo and let's just see what that looks like let's hope that just does the first column for us quite nicely so we're running us so we want to go from 18 to 30 we want to see an 18 19 20 we want to see that ah fantastic and then we want to put a hash nine somewhere over here and then we want to work out the fahrenheit value so we're going to put in a little hash nine here just some hash nine now, I need to put in the value for Fahrenheit, which means we must work it out. Now, I've got a real variable. I'll type Fahrenheit. There we go. And the formula is the degree Celsius. Where do I get the degrees? That's my looping variable, whatever the looping variable is. So the first time it does it, it'll be an 18. The second time it'll be a 19 and so on. We're going to take that Celsius. We're going to multiply by 9 divided by 5. Let's put that in brackets just to make sure we get our bod maths correct. And then at the end, we're going to plus 32. So that's my Fahrenheit calculation. And then at the end of that, we're going to display the Fahrenheit value. But that's a real. We want to have it in a memo control, which is string. So I'm going to convert this from a float to a string. In this case, let's display it to two decimal places. Let's use the effort fixed. Comma, eight, comma, or let's display it to one decimal place, just for convenience. I think in my diagram in the example, we used one. So we're going, our looping variables are cell, going from whatever they ask us to start at to where they end. We calculate the Fahrenheit value for each looping variable. Every time the looping variable changes, calculate the new Fahrenheit and display the looping variable with the new equivalent Fahrenheit. Let's have a look and see what that does. Display. Here we go. And if we went from 1 to 30, there we go. Those are correct. There we go. Those are the values that we want. Fantastic. Let's go do another example. Our final example for this video, we're going to look at a times table. Do you remember your times tables? Do you remember them? Do you remember all those things that you had to be learned at school? Oh, one times five was easier. Well, the one times table was easy. The two times was easy because you just doubled it. And then the 10 was quite easy. I remember the 10 being easy. And then the 11 was also quite nice. But the rest of them, oh, they were so difficult to learn. But we had to learn them. So let's, like, for example, the three times table. Like three times one is three. Three times two is six. Remember them? 
we want to display that using a for loop. So we are repeatedly doing the same thing. We're taking the three times in the bar, some sort of variable, and making it equal to three. So let's remember what that looks like. We're saying three times one equals three, three times two equals six. So remember that. That's what I want to display. Okay, so let's go do this in Delphi. So here we've got our little button. I'm going to click on the button. We want to display the times table over here. And what's going to happen is it's going to ask the user with the input box which times table we want to display. So if we type in a three, we want the three times table or the seven or whatever. And I made some nice little headings there where it takes that three. This is the three times table. So it looks pretty cool. Should probably be a space there. But yeah, so let's get into it. We want to repeatedly display something that looks like this. We want to say three times about one equals three, something that looks like that. Okay, so, and normally, at, at, I know when I was at school, we always did the time table from one to 12. So I'm gonna have a for loop, and I'm gonna use an R variable. I've already declared it here as an integer. And I'm gonna go from one up until, what? Let's go one to 12. Like we said, you can go one to 10 if you want to. I'm gonna do one to 12. I know exactly how many times I want, want to do my, my loop. End of the for loop. So what are we doing? Let's do it column by column. So in the memo, display.lines.add, what are we adding? We want three times one, then three times two. That first column is always a three. Where do I get, that is the actual number. Where do I get that three? It's from there. So I'm going to add our num to the memo control, but we need to convert it from an integer, because it's an integer, to a string, convert it from into a string. Okay, so let's just see what it does. Let's do it column by column. Let's break it down. Run it, display. Yes, we want the three times table. Three times table, all the threes. Fantastic. Then next to the three, I want to have that X. So I'm gonna plus an X with a space in between. Let's shift it up so we can get some space. Let's have a look, see what that looks like. Display the three times table. There we go. We're getting there. Then I'm going to want a one, two, three. I need something that's going one. Do we have something going one, two, three? Oh, it's our looping variable. Our looping variable is going one, two. So we want to add R next in our uh, this table. But R is an integer. So I'm just going to put an int to a string for that R. So we're taking that three, whatever they typed in the input box, the three times a bar, one, three times a bar, two. So let's see what it looks like. It's going to look like it's going to be what we want. Yes, three. Ah, that looks very nice. Fantastic. And then after the the one, we want to have some sort of space equal to space. So plus a space equal to space. So something like that. Let's run it. It's working. Display three. Ooh, very fancy. Now, how do we get that last value? Well. It's going to go three times three, three times one is three, then it's going to go three times two is six. But how do I get that? It, it, well, it's, it's the number that the user gave in multiplied by whatever the looping variable is at that particular time. So it's literally, I can do the calculation actually over here. I can say it's going to be whatever R num is multiplied by R. Yeah, just like that. But that is going to be a integer. So we go from int to string. Let's see. Int to string. We must put that's a little red bar there, which must be a plus there. We're going to add the R num plus R. So it's going to take that three times by one, convert it to a string, display the three. Then the three times about two, display it. So let's see what that looks like. And there we go. Fantastic. Well, three times one is three. Three times two is six. So there we go. And if we change this timetable to the seven times table, then it'll do the appropriate thing for the seven times table. Fantastic. I wish we had this at school. It would have been easy to learn. Okay, so there we go. So you see we went from one to 12. And we broke it down into its individual columns, displaying what we need to as we do. Whenever we're displaying something that's going one, two, three, four, then we're displaying R. If we're displaying a value that's affected 
that's changing all the time, then obviously it's a calculation based on R. And there we go. For more videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.